Hello everyone and welcome to my channels. Welcome to this rest and worship Sabbath on Shula's Ministries, Overcomers, Overcomers and Anonymous, and also the Sabbath chat on the pursuit to Christ. Today I'm doing again both videos together. So okay, so um, this week on the pursuit to Christ, we're talking about the importance of a relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? And but on Shula Ministries Overcomers Anonymous, we're talking about um we can talk about the same thing, but also the relationship and churchianity or Christianity. And I think that um this is why I pulled both videos together today because uh, we can share the space, okay, on this particular topic. So, okay, so my name is Sheila Rollins, and I am the founder of Shula Ministries Entertainment and Associates Inc. And on this YouTube, we are Overcomers Anonymous, where we support anyone designed to overcome anything. And we do it with Jesus Christ being our higher power, and also what he's accomplished for us on the cross. Therefore, our cleanliness, our wholeness, our completeness, those things that we thought were impossible becomes possible with Jesus Christ. However, we need to be obedient to his word. Which one? I encourage the King James because it's what he encouraged me. Um, the, the Ten Commandments, including the Fourth Commandment, where he admonished us to keep the seventh day Sabbath. Okay. In the description, I have all that information, okay? So also, in a pursuit to Christ, we do a Sabbath chat about whatever it is that we're talking about during the week. This week, it's about the relationship with God, not just accepting him as, as Savior, but also accepting him as Lord, inviting him to into every aspect of our lives, getting forgiveness getting healing and being obedient to him as God, Jesus Christ was obedient to God. We must be obedient to Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, the Bible says, why call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things that I say. So in order for him to be our Lord, as well as our savior, we must be obedient. So, okay. So today talking about churchianity and Christianity. Some people think that all they have to do to be a Christian is to go to church. And I'm reminded of what Joyce Meyer says. She says, you can go and sit in a garage as long as you can, as much as you can, and you'll never be a car, okay? So we can go to church but it doesn't make us a Christian. The thing that makes us a Christian is allowing Christ in every aspect of our life and being obedient to him, okay? So some people think that getting our praise on, jumping around, shouting, doing all those things, you know, both hands up and all that, that makes us a Christian. Other people think speaking in tongues, unless you speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Ghost and you are not a Christian. While speaking in tongues is one of the gifts of the Spirit, okay? If there's no interpretation, the Bible basically says it, it, you can't edify anybody. It doesn't edify the church. Don't even do it, okay? You can do that in your secret space. But anything that we do in the church needs to edify the church. The church needs to benefit, okay? So an unknown tongue, we don't benefit from that. But even Jesus spoke in tongues. But he spoke in tongues and he also interpreted. You know, the part in the Bible, and I can't remember exactly what he said, but after it, it, it meant, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? But before that, he spoke in a tongue that I can't remember right now, but I'll try to put it in the description, which is the arrow next to the title, okay? So also, um, knocking on doors, telling other people about Jesus Christ. That doesn't make us a Christian, okay? So, all right, singing praises, using your gifts for God, all right? Praising God, a good eloquent preacher, being able to pray, singing, playing the drums, 
whatever it is. Okay. Being vegan. I'm vegan, but that doesn't make me a Christian being fit. You know, I'm all into exercising, lifting weights, walking, you know, I want to get back into running a little bit, but those things do not make us Christians. So, okay. So if they don't make us Christians, comment there below. Are they churchianity or Christianity? Okay. So I have seven things here that make us Christians. First of all, as well as accepting Jesus as Savior, you know, being grateful for the sacrifice of him dying on the cross, being able to pray to God, the, the storehouse of heaven open to us, being able to give forgiveness and healing and that, all those kind of things. We have to develop a relationship and we develop it by asking him for stuff, you know, watching how he blesses, being obedient to him. Okay. These are the principal things. These are the things which Jesus did, which allowed him to be called the son of God. He was obedient. So in order for us to be sons and daughters of the most high God, we must be obedient. Otherwise, we are bastards, spiritual bastards. Okay. So kings and kings of God have relationships with God. The Bible says basically that in all the churches that we have, Jesus has sheep of other folds. In other words, it's not going to be all Seventh-day Adventists that's going to heaven, okay? Even though they have a good message, they have the health message and all that. It ain't going to be just the old uh, Seventh-day Adventists. It ain't going to be just Jehovah Witness. They knock on doors, you know, uh, telling people about God and all that. It ain't going to be just them, Okay. Uh, it's not going to be just Baptist or whatever religion persuasion that you can think of. The Bible says his sheep know his voice. Okay. They obey him. They will not listen to another. And this is the greatest thing. He knows them. Okay. He knows them because they reflect who he is. Okay. So, um, so it's not any one church like all Seventh-day Adventists, even though a lot of people believe that. If you're not holiness, you ain't going to heaven. You know, if you're not Jehovah Witness, you're not going to heaven. The Bible doesn't say that. Jesus says he has sheep of other fold. So it could be a Muslim. It could be whatever. However, the Bible says when they hear his voice, they be obedient and wherever they are, they follow him. Glory to God. So, okay. So I said that I have seven things before I get into that. If you have not, um, did your subscription, subscribe to, uh, Shula Ministries, Overcoming Our Anonymous or the Pursuit to Christ, take a moment and do that right now. Okay. Share the video before I get into the next portion about the Christianity side. Okay. How do you know that they Christians? Okay. Before I get into that, take a minute to share the video so we can have other people to join us and encourage subscription as you share. Okay. Remember to give me some thumbs up. These are hard topics. Okay. It encouraged me. It lets me know what you like, and it gives me the confidence to keep putting out videos. Okay. So, all right. So, um, all right. So number one, God's people worship him. Now, the arrow next to the title, check that out. I have all the scriptures there, okay? There's other information there as well. So, okay, so they worship God. Our creator, you know, the, the one who made heaven and earth, they worship the true God. Number two, they keep the testimonies of Jesus. They keep, they keep the commandments of God. The Ten Commandments, the commandments of God, and there's others in the Bible, and the testimony of Jesus, the things that Jesus did are the things that we do also. And then number three, they study to show their self approved. They're not just politically correct. They are spiritually correct as well. And number four, um, you will know them 
by their fruits. Okay. They will mimic who Christ is. You will know them by their fruits. And then number five, okay. Um, they have the Holy Ghost and these are not in order. I'm so sorry. They have the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost will bring us into all truth and he will show us the things to come. As a matter of fact, the Holy Ghost was given to us by God, the Father, in the name of Jesus. And then number six, okay, God's people produce fruit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Now, temperance don't mean that you can have a little bit of something that's wrong. No. Temperance means sometimes that you don't do it at all. Smoking, drinking, partying is not the way of God. Okay. All right. So, and number six. Oh, I did number six. The fruits of the spirit. I did number six. And before I get to number seven, that which is the last one, I have to say for you to check out. Please check out my playlist. I have plenty there. Plenty there. Check those things out. Okay. On both YouTube, the playlist, check out the playlist. Okay. Go to the page and you'll see, um, you know, on the dashboard, you'll see, slide it over until you see playlist, hit playlist, and it'll take you right to it. I have a lot of different topics there, including comedy. You like to laugh? Okay. Um, this journey is a process. Okay. And so we need some laughter. So check that out, you know? So, all right. So the, the seventh thing is, is that the Bible says that on the seventh day, Jesus went into the temple as his custom was. So what am I saying? The people of God will keep the seventh day Sabbath. This is the day that was ordained in, at creation by the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Well, God, he ordained, he did everything that God said. So it was ordained for us. There is going to become a day where God will gather his people from the four forces of, or four areas of the, of the, of the earth, Okay, and we will not lo no longer be scattered in various churches. We will be in one place under one shepherd. If this is your will, just please pray for me. Father, we thank you, Lord, for being with us. Lord, we just ask that you would be with us in a very, very special way. Those that don't have a relationship, help us, dear God, to invite you into every aspect of our lives and believe by faith that you have, dear God. You know, we love you. We honor you, Father. And we just commit ourselves to you in a very, very special way. Help us not to lean on churchianity, just doing things, Father, and not have no relationship. Help us to develop our relationship with you. These things we ask in the loving name of Jesus, okay? And so basically... When Christ comes into our lives, the true person that he has allowed us to be, a purpose in our hearts for us to be, we can take off, and this is just more metaphorically, we can take off the false person that we were and be the true person that God had in his mind for us to be. This is true Christianity. This is true sons in daughtership and true kings and queenships. That's all I have for you. I love you. I'll see you in the next YouTube. Now that to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. I love you. See you in the next YouTube. I may not get all the scriptures in there right now. If you view the video and it's not there, check back later this evening or something. It will be there, but I'm going to try. Okay. I love you. See you in the next YouTube.